If you have some rocks and you give a fraction of them away, how can you figure out how many you have left in your collection? In this lesson, you will learn how to represent weight measurements by creating diagrams that feature a measurement scale. Let's review. We use different tools and diagrams for different purposes when solving math problems. We will find some of these useful as we solve our word problems throughout this set of lessons. Lines, tables, bar diagrams, and even tape diagrams. And many of these tools should look familiar. Since we are going to be working with customary weight measurements, let's also review some of those common conversions and a strategy for converting. We know that 16 ounces is equal to one pound and that 2,000 pounds is equal to one ton. Now, if we wanted to convert and see how many ounces were equal to three pounds, we could use our making a table strategy. We would start it off by saying one pound is equal to 16 ounces, two pounds is equal to 32, and we would continue adding 16 down our table until we got to where we wanted to, which is three pounds here, and we can see that three pounds is equal to 48 ounces. Okay, let's take a look at a real world problem. Santiago had 45 rocks in his collection. Each weighed one pound. He gave two fifths of his collection to his cousin. How much did his collection weigh in ounces after giving away the rocks to his cousin? Okay, let's look at the important information here. We know he has a total of 45 rocks and that each rock weighs one pound. We also know he gave away two fifths of the collection to his cousin. And so the question wants to know how much did his collection weigh after he gave away these rocks and they want their answer in ounces. Now, this is a lot of information, so I think I'm gonna use a diagram drawing to help me think through the problem, and then maybe I'll be able to better figure out what I need to do to solve. Now, we reviewed lots of tools, so as I'm thinking about which tool I wanna to use, I don't think a number line is really going to fit my need here, and I'm actually gonna try using a bar diagram for this problem. Okay, I know my total is 45, so I'm going to draw a full bar to represent his total of 45 rocks. Now, since the fraction they gave me was 2 fifths, and then I know the denominator represents the number of pieces the total's divided into, I'm going to divide my total bar into five equal pieces. Okay, this diagram has helped me. Now I see what I have to do. I have to figure out how many rocks are equal to one-fifth or one box in my diagram. Whatever number goes in the box has to be the same for each one, and it also needs to total my 45 rocks. I could guess and check what number belongs in the boxes, or I have some other options. I could do 45 divided by 5. I could also think, hmm, what times 5 equals 45? Well, I know 45 divided by 5 equals 9. I can check it with 9 times 5. Yep, that equals 45. So now I see that 9 belongs in each box. And each fifth, each one fifth, is equal to having 9 rocks. So let's go back and look at the question. It said he gave away two-fifths of his collection to his cousin. So I'm going to box in two-fifths, or two out of the five boxes, and cross them out, because that helps me represent that he's giving those away. So to find out how many he gave away, I can add those two groups together, 9 plus 9, and that equals 18. So I know that Santiago gave away 18 rocks that weigh 18 pounds. Now, to determine how many rocks he had left, I could either find the total of the three-fifths he has left, or I could even subtract what he gave away from his original total. I have options. It's really your choice on what you do, 
Uh, for this time, I guess I'll show the subtraction way and I'll check it with the other way. So I'm going to do the 45 minus the 18 he gave away to his cousin, and I get that he has 27 rocks left. To check it, I could add the other 3 fifths, or even do 9 times 3, and get 27 as well. So I now found my answer of Santiago has 27 rocks left, and those weigh 27 pounds. If I were to stop here and give that as my answer, I would be wrong. A common misunderstanding sometimes occurs when students forget to go back to the problem and double check what it was actually asking them to do before thinking they're done. We want to make sure after all this hard work that we do that we actually answer the question being asked. This question actually asks us to put our answer in ounces, not in pounds. So when we had this answer of 27 pounds left, it was wrong. It wants the answer in ounces. So we're now that we've gone back and we've seen this, I can use my make a table strategy to convert the 27 pounds into ounces. I know that one pound is equal to 16 ounces, two pounds is equal to 32, three pounds is equal to 48, and I see a pattern, so I'm going to stop here and, and use the pattern to my advantage. I see that for every pound, they're adding an additional 16. So I can actually do number of pounds times 16 to give me the number of ounces. So I'm going to go ahead and plug in my 27 times 16 to get an answer of 432 ounces. So my final answer is Santiago's rock collection now weighs 432. 32 ounces. In this lesson, you have learned how to represent weight measurements by creating diagrams that feature a measurement scale.